Coppersmith still perfect on the day. Perfect. A subjective adjective used to describe almost anything. A house, a person, an essay, a game. Courtney Coppersmith, the star of the show for UMBC. <laughs> if we're being honest, I mean, I was just trying to like work like with the spins and everything and honestly just trying to get them to swing at pitches that they probably shouldn't have and it kind of worked, so. Courtney Coppersmith threw five no-hitters in her All-American freshman season, including a perfect game. The York, Pennsylvania native led UMBC to its first ever America East Softball Championship in 2019 and was named Most Outstanding Player of the Tournament after earning major accolades of Rookie of the Year and Pitcher of the Year during the regular season. But as Coppersmith will tell you, a perfect game does not reflect a perfect state of mind. Mental health like, is a big issue and you can have a smile on your face on the field with the uniform on and be crying in your bed at 2 o'clock in the morning. You don't know what's going on behind the jersey, behind the smile, behind the joy. In the summer of 2019, Coppersmith wrote about her mental health and submitted her essay as part of a contest organized by Sharon Robinson, daughter of Jackie Robinson, in the RBI World Series. Coppersmith's free-flowing thoughts were not written with the intention of winning the contest. Rather, it was a therapeutic exercise for someone deeply battling to keep her mental health in check. When I was writing it, I was not writing it to win a contest. I was not writing it to, I don't know, not like not share my story, but like I wasn't writing it for like everybody to kind of know. But what was included in the essay likely resonated with the other student athletes in the room. Late nights, early morning workouts, high stress levels. Student athletes have some of the most grueling schedules, and the stress and anxiety that is a byproduct of those demands can be more than an overwhelming burden. I wrote in like the essay, like I wasn't taking the best care of myself. Like obviously I didn't sleep much. I was up until 2:30, 3 o'clock every night, getting up at five for conditioning, getting up at seven for lift or seven for classes. So I wasn't sleeping much. I wasn't eating as often as I should have. And when I was driving late at night, I didn't wear my seatbelt. Like, I was accepting that fate of, if I get in a car accident, it doesn't matter. And like, it sucks to say, and like, it's hard to say, and my parents didn't know any of it. And that was the hardest thing I had to do, was read my essay to my parents. I like listen to them cry because they didn't know any of it was going on because I didn't talk to them about it. While Coppersmith did not intend for anyone to know her story, the teenager was brave enough to endure Sharon Robinson reading it aloud to a room full of softball players and coaches. Mental illness is something, something most people underestimate. I didn't really necessarily know the depths of how much it went and I was very proud of her um, for speaking out the way she did and just putting it out there that it's okay to be, you know, not, it's okay to not be okay. Coppersmith has since received an outpour of support not only from her family and teammates, but from opposing student athletes in the America East Conference. After it came out and everything, and it started getting everywhere, a bunch of people from actually our conference um, reached out to me. Some of the other teammates that are kind of my enemies, like when it comes to playing, all reached out to me because they read my story. They felt the same way. They've been through it before and they gave me advice for what helped them. For someone of her caliber and, and as, you know, as popular as she is in this conference to step out, you know, the shadows like that and to express this to everyone, it just, you know, that's just going to help the next person out that much more. And um, I know it helps, you know, people on our team are proud of her. I know the people around here are proud of her. So, you know, it's definitely a great ambassador for you know, for someone, you know, for people who are dealing with these things day in and day out. Sometimes that is one of the best, like, coping mechanisms because if you don't want to talk to people about it or you're too scared to talk to people, a pen and a paper are always there, a computer is always there, and there's not going to be any judgment from that. But I didn't want to be a burden on somebody else, which is why I kept it all in and why it got as bad as it did. And now I have those people that I can rely on and 
talk to about and express my feelings, rant about if I'm just having a bad day so that I don't keep everything bottled inside. That's what um, like the Better Together games are for, that's what Spread Respect is for, that's what the Retriever Project like for us personally is for because it's not just me. Like I know it's not just me like at this school that has the depression, has the anxiety, has the suicidal thoughts. It's something that is very active, not alone, not just in like college in general, but like student athletes in general. The Better Together initiative was established by the America East Conference in 2018 to create more mentally healthy environments for student athletes across all nine campuses through education, outreach, and events, which have been uniting forces. It's a great to like feel like you have like those people to like rely on and all of that and that's the best part about it. Most people like underestimate like the impact of mental health like in general and like how it impacts people on as well as like collegiate athletes.